Hey guys, and welcome to another video. So I want something a little different here. Um, a lot of my videos are like general ZBrush techniques, but I know for beginners that isn't always super helpful because you're like, hey, I have these tools and now what do I do with them? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna make these videos where I just kind of talk through how to make one aspect of a model that I've already made. That way you can kind of see how these techniques all come together. I'm not gonna be recreating it perfectly, otherwise this would be like an hour long video and I don't wanna remake the exact same thing I already made. So I'm just gonna walk through how to have made it. So the focus for today is these really cool wings right here. So as you can tell, they are multiple pieces that I stacked on each other. I held shift and F to get this view right here. This is called like the wireframe view. But obviously it's not enough information. So let me really go through here and show you guys how I did this. All right, so I have the wings here oriented to where you can see all of their polyframe magic and what was happening here. So again, we're just focusing on these wings. So all of these pieces here, these giant like spikes that are coming out are identical pieces. These pieces right here are the same pieces, just shrunk down. And then same with this, this big disc right here, same as all these small ones. And also this what connects to her back, same as these spikes. So really, this is just two pieces. So now that I've kind of simplified what that's like, let me go ahead and make one of these pieces. All right, so how I made this disc is I just appended a cylinder. I clicked on W for the 3D gizmo and held down shift so I can rotate this in increments of like precise degrees. Otherwise you kind of can get like roughly, and I don't want that, I want exactly flat to me. There we go, 90. I flipped it over got a little bit thinner so it looks nicer. And if you hold shift F, I don't really have enough polygons here to sculpting detail on. If you look right here, you can see that it's 482 points and that's really just not enough. If I go in with my clay buildup brush, nothing's even happening. <laughs> so what I will do is I will go to Dynamesh. Looks much, much nicer. I have a lot more to deal with. The edge doesn't look as smooth. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna go to geometry and click on divide. You see this is before, this is the after. I went from 35,000 points to 142,000 points. Again, I'm doing that because this is the before. It's really pixelated looking. And then once I divide, these start looking a lot nicer. All right, now where the magic really comes with this is radial symmetry. So go to transform, activate symmetry. Click on this little R right here, you can get radial. Now I can see it's on the wrong axis. So I think this is supposed to be on Z. I'll turn off X, haha, I was right. And that's how I did this. Now, let me look at those original wings though, so I can remember what pattern this even was. There we go. All right, so I went in with damn standard and I just drew a little circle in the middle, held alt damn standard to get that raised edge in the center. Kind of the same thing right here. Put an edge and again, I'm alternating with um, alt and um, not alt. <laughs> so alt is the rays and then without alt is carving in. When you put them next to each other, it looks pretty nice. Now notice how it's kind of hard to get a nice line here because I don't have enough points. So a trick for this gets smoother just to increase your radial count to like, it was eight and I have it at 14. So now I don't have to move as far. And so it's gonna make this a little bit easier to get like a nicer line. It's a little bobbly, but you get the point. And do these little points right here. And there you go. Looks kind of like the original. Again, this is like my sloppy walkthrough. And then go Dynamesh and then Polish. I'll increase the resolution a little bit. And if you want to know where Dynamesh is, it is in uh, under Tool Palette, Geometry, Dynamesh. I'm just so used to my custom UI, but there you go. And then Control and drag a little box right here. It's just a little mask box and that will trigger the Dynamesh operation. So again, look closely. This is before, this is the after. You'll see this is tightened up a little bit. And if you do want to do the poly paint fun, just pick a pink color that you want. You can go to your color palette right here and then click fill object. And there we go. Um, I also like having like that really nice yellow color in the center here. And the way that I do that is I go to my paint brush, which is B for the brush palette. And then where, where is poly paint? There we go. I'm so used to my custom UI. Hold space bar and you'll see that you have different options for the input. So I picked drag rectangle. So again, space bar. Click on your input, drag rectangle. Pick the color that you want for the inside and then just drag a circle. Now, as you can tell, it's actually really harsh and that's not a nice fade at all. So what you wanna do is hold space bar again and lower your RGB intensity to like, we'll try 20, let's see how it does. It did better. I'm gonna lower it to eight. 
it's still really harsh. This is a vibrant color. Let's pull over all the way down to like three. You really want it to be soft. There we go. So that looks decently nice. I'm gonna do one more damp sander line on the outside here to look more like the original. And then all I did for the outside here is just draw some, some lines. Again, doing alt to build that ridge and then without alt next to it. There we go. So this is kind of a slightly sloppier, similar version. <laughs> So once I had this, I clicked on B for insert mesh, and I created a new brush, create insert mesh. Clicked on new, and now I can just draw this on. I'm gonna turn off symmetry, otherwise it's gonna be a mess. Actually, you know what? I'll keep it. I can show you guys a little shortcut. This would've been faster the first time I'd be making this. I'm gonna lower this to like eight points. I'm gonna draw this on. Notice it does not keep poly paint. and kind of orient this where I want them to be. They're a little too big, so I'll go ahead and shrink this. There we go. I'm gonna click Split Mass Points, which is under the Subtool Palette. Split Mass Points. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mask what I don't want. Oops, we are auto-saving. All right, so I don't want these points right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete the points that I don't want. You can do that by splitting them and deleting them or by uh, masking and hiding, really any method you want. And now I have these little dots right here. As you can tell, actually it looks like I have twice as many. So I could just hold control and just drag right here. But again, this is just rough recreation. You will have to poly paint them again manually. So I'll just do that really quickly here. All right, so I kind of have those points. You'll notice that I made them really long right here. And the way that I did that was just by going for W for the 3D gizmo, holding control, and then just dragging them back just like this. There we go, it's looking kind of similar. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead to the subtool palette and merge these down. And then finally, I will talk through how I made these spires right here. So I appended a cube and I just kind of adjusted the shape to get closer to what I wanted. I'm gonna hide that other object we made. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I go to Dynamesh right away to get myself some more polygons. I have 482 right now, that's really not enough to work with. Divide one time so I have more to work with. And let's see how I made this shape right here. So I'm gonna turn on symmetry. And then for this one, I wanna make sure that I have symmetry on the other side as well. Otherwise, if you start moving stuff around, like right here, the, that's actually not a good example. Let me do it one more time. There we go. See how like this back end is, it's poking out because it's not symmetrical um, from the front and back. So I just gotta transform and I think it's gonna be Y. Nope, it was not Y. Z, there we go. So now you can see it's gonna affect both sides and it's gonna be all nice and symmetrical. All right, so now let's look at these spires here. So looks like what I did was, is I made it a little thinner at the top here. I made it pointy, so I just have my move brush right here. I'm just kind of creating the shape that I want. There we go, that's roughly the same shape. Make sure you have your mask pin with this little saved rectangle and you don't have like mask lasso, for example, make sure it's mask pen. And then go ahead and drag a box somewhere. If you hold space bar, you can move it over. You can do it directly on your model, that's totally fine, but I've noticed for me it's a little easier to do it off of it and then drag it over. Either way, it totally works. I click divide one more time to get a little more resolution here. There we go. Hold control and tap. Little 3D gizmo and then kind of just suck this in right there. Do that a little bit more. And then I'm going to Dynamesh with polish turned on. It's gonna delete the subdivision levels, that's fine. There we go, that looks more or less the same. And then to get these little patterns right here, I just went in with damn standard. I use this brush a lot. <laughs> I kind of carved in. go that's roughly the same 
And then same with this, I just masked a little spot right here. Inverted the mask by holding control and tapping. W for the 3D gizmo, and then control on this little yellow square and drag out. Now to make it a little more similar to the original, let's make that a little pointier. Suck that in a little bit more. And now it's more or less the same. I can hold C to click on the original pink right here to get that exact same color, or I can find that color up in here. I'm gonna click on Fill Object. This is my custom UI. If you wanna find it, it's Control, not Control, Color, Fill Object. And then back to my favorite gradient technique, picking that yellow color right here. And there we go. I'm gonna go back to our original shape here. Oops, turning off symmetry, so it does not do that. And then once I have this piece right here, I'm gonna make it a little skinnier. I'm just gonna hold control while the 3D gizmo is up, and I can start getting some duplicates. And then I just kinda drag it around until I have the shape and the pieces that I like. When I get to the bottom here, I make them a little bit shorter, just because it's more similar to like how a bird's feathers are. They taper on the bottom, they're a little smaller. There we go. And then once I have that, I will remove the mask and I'll duplicate this entire thing by again, just holding control and then dragging off anywhere on the 3D gizmo. I'll make these really small, make them a little stubbier, maybe hold control and make them inflate a little bit if I want to. And then move them in right here. I think when I did the original wings, I actually did this one by one again, but this is kind of just a faster trick. And there you go. This is a very sloppy and quick recreation of those wings. And you can kind of see why they don't look exactly the same. Um, these original wings probably took me closer to 40 minutes. <laughs> but there's like the general idea of how they were created. Obviously I didn't put as much care and attention into the placement of things, but you get the idea. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, the one part I don't think I did a very good job explaining I want to do really quick is when I deleted some of these um, little doodads. So let me just run through that really quick just in case anyone's watching the whole video. They're like, what about that one part? All right. So what I did was is I'm going to have shift F to show the wireframe here. I masked the ones I didn't want and I hit control W. So I changed the poly group. And if you do control shift, you can click on those and it'll select just those. And then what's cool is if you go to geometry, you can delete what isn't there. So it's modified topology and then it's del hidden. So delete hidden, there it is. And that's how I did that, just to kind of reiterate. Another way you could have done that is by masking what you didn't want. Going to sub tool, split, split mask points. And then you just have, you'd have both of them still exist and then you can just go delete right here. Either way, it's fine. But yeah, I wanted to run through that one more time just in case there was anyone that was like, hey, I don't know how to uh, separate and delete objects. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed kind of like this little quick tutorial on how to make these wings. If there's anything that I glazed over and did not reiterate on, please let me know. I have no problem letting you guys know. And if you do end up making your own version of these wings, I would honestly love to see that. Um, you can feel free to like link something, um, but from like Emger or whatever. Um, if you want more of these kind of videos or just like more help in general, um, check out my Patreon. I have a $10 and a $20 tier. Um, it has a lot of different rewards and just like benefits for you guys for me teaching. The $20 tier especially is a one-on-one -on -one mentorship if that's something that interests you. And yeah, if you have questions about that too, also let me know. That wraps up the video though, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye.